Hi there, Nat Richards from Techs on the Move. Here to talk very briefly, if I can manage it, about what I reckon are the top five things everyone should know about seeking a job in Australia. So we could probably put a heap of different things into a, a top five when you're thinking about a new job, or perhaps you're, uh, you're really just thinking more broadly about where your career can take you and uh, maybe what you should be doing over the next five, 10 years or even more. But ultimately it's this list of five that I've narrowed down on that I think are really important to be thinking about all the time. First one, number one is that I reckon for most people, job ads are kind of dead. So it might seem a strange thing to say because of course most people, it doesn't really matter what sort of occupation or trade they have, what sort of industry they work in. If you're thinking about a new job, first place to research is probably a jobs board, which is fair enough. The problem with the jobs board though, from my perspective is, if I'm running a, uh, you know, in our uh, particular industry, of course, automotive, if I'm running a workshop and I'm thinking about going and looking for a mechanic uh, or uh, any other technical staff on a jobs board, it's probably because I've run out of options anywhere else. So really it's a last ditch effort. And from a candidate's perspective, do you really want to be answering to last ditch effort? Probably not. Uh, instead, my perspective on it as a job seeker would be, where can I find a, a job or a role with a business that is really forward thinking, uh, wants to engage uh, people wherever they can find them that have fantastic skills and a great attitude no matter what sort of business position they're in at that point because we know that finding good technicians or motor mechanics uh, is very difficult and uh, that's not gonna change anytime soon. So a good progressive business that you wanna work for probably shouldn't only be relying on job ads to find the right person for the job. Point number two, keep it classic. So it's really uh, easy to fall into the trap whenever you're talking to a potential employer to talk about your current or your former employer and probably not in such a flattering way. I think we've all been there. The thing is though, there's really no win to be had from doing that because all that people tend to do when they talk about what they didn't like about their former or, uh, or current employer is bag on them and sell on negativity basically you're much better off going into that sort of interview position or talking to someone that might uh, offer you a job uh, in the future, talking about the things that you can bring to, to the equation rather than what you didn't like about uh, where you, you are or where you have been. Um, it's a little bit like trying to sell a, a car or a truck by talking about how bad everyone else's product is. Talk about what you can do and why that's important to the people that you're hoping to get a job with. Uh, point three, uh, leave your current job for the right reasons. So I'm not here to say that money isn't important. Of course it is, it absolutely is. And we've been on track record for many years talking about how uh, mechanics of all different walks of life should probably be paid more. However, a lot of the time I think it's easy for motor mechanics to start talking about leaving a job uh, because maybe they've realized that other people in the workshop that they work in are better paid than they are or they think that because they've been in a job for a long time, they deserve a pay rise or any number of other factors that can feed into this. The challenge though, in talking to a new employer is that these things aren't really that tangible. You know, they don't really show uh, that you're a properly accountable, really forward thinking and sophisticated motor mechanic or truck technician or panel beater or whatever your automotive trade might be. So it's really worth thinking about before you go and, uh, and try to find a new job. How can I try to get what I want in my current job if there's still some hope left here? How can I make the best case uh, to make sure that I'm putting myself in the best position to possibly succeed and doing it in a positive way that reflects on my skills and what I can bring to the equation rather than comparing myself simply to everything else that happens around me. Uh, point number four, think long term when you're talking about a new job. So uh, unless you're, you found yourself needing a, 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 you know, a job to pay the bills right now, think long term if you've got that luxury. Uh, it sounds really cheesy to say, but the future starts pretty much right now all the time. So if you've got an idea of where you wanna be in the future, the best time to build towards that is right now with the next job that you're looking for. Uh, point number five, my, uh, my standard fallbacks, drive and professionalism. It's not that difficult if you're an employer to go out there and appeal to people who have got the right basic skills or qualifications. What's a lot harder to do and is definitely a lot more appealing is to find someone that has that stuff, hopefully a little more experience in their trade than the average candidate, but more importantly, a killer attitude. Someone who is driven to show up to work every day, knows exactly what they're doing there and wants to be the slickest, most professional employee that they can. That's much harder. So there you go, that's the top five. Uh, by all means, hit me up if you wanna talk about these things. 
nat.richards at textonthemove.com.au. Hope that helped.